Hello and welcome to Rex of Planetary Guide. I'm your host today. And basically what we're going to look at first is Gleese 876. And the interesting fact about Gleese 876 is that it's a red dwarf 15.2 light years away in the constellation Aquarius. The mass of the star is 0.334 times the mass of the Sun and its radius is 0.36 times the mass of the sun. It is, if we zoom in, a red star, obviously it's a red dwarf, and it's the third closest star to our known planetary system, and it's one of the few things that we know that show our place resonance in its planetary system, which was first noted in the Galilean moons. And the planetary system was first discovered well, discovered in 1998. So let's get started. The farthest planet that's here today is discovered in 2005, the same year that El Hajiju completed his move to Bolton from Liverpool. Now, if we pause it, we can see that it's 6.83 times the mass of the Earth. But we don't know whether it's a terrestrial planet or a gas giant. It was discovered using its checking its effect on the sun's and on the sun on the star's radial velocity. But we don't know whether it's terrestrial or a gas giant. And if it is a gas giant, it's obviously migrated in with the others. It doesn't transit the star, so it's hard to tell things about its composition. So it could be that it's a terrestrial planet like this, or it could be a gas giant like the other three I'll show you in a minute. So the others that we have are Gleese 876C that let's go to now. Actually no that's the wrong one. Haha <laughs> go to there we go. Now this one discovered in 2001 also using the radial velocity technique. This one is a gas giant. It's huge. It's very big. I don't know how big it is. Wait. It's 0.71 times the mass of Jupiter. And in the artist's impression, I found it had the rings, so I decided to put rings on it. And obviously, it too was discovered using its radial velocity. It technically is on the inner edge of the habitable zone. As you can see, the red indicates where it might be a bit too hot, the green indicates where it's just fine, and blue where it's too cold. And obviously, as you go further out, it just becomes stupid. Let's go further in. Now we have a look. Maybe, maybe it has moons. I don't have any moons in, but it probably does. Probably does. Gas giants ha have a lot of moons. They tend to because they have such strong gravity. So maybe. Maybe it has a moon, which can harbor life, but calculations using its tidal velocity, tidal velocity, tidal interactions of the planet, have indicated that this might not be the case, because it will make it too hot. So just imagine this with loads of moon dotted around. Maybe one of them one day will be good enough to live on, but probably not. The next one. Is Gliese 876b, which is obviously the first planet that was discovered. It was first sort of saw in 1998 and then confirmed in 2000 using um, radio velocity. And it was the first planet to be found orbiting a red dwarf. So that's what well, that's its claim to fame. Now this one is a glass giant, glass giant, a gas giant. It's 2.28 it's the mass of Jupiter. It's migrated farther with the others. And because the red dwarf's habitable zone is increasing, as you can see at the moment, it looks like it's in the green, but you know, th th this program isn't perfect. It's actually on the outer echelons, so at the moment it's too cold, and you can see it actually, it's minus 36. But maybe in the future, because red dwarfs they, they grow in size and luminosity, the, the habitable zone will expand, and maybe soon, maybe soon. Some of its moons that I have put in this time. Let's have a look. 
They're, they're called fictional moons, and this one seems to have collided with one. I didn't mean that for that to happen, but you know, whatever. Now maybe, and title interactions, they've t been talking to account, and it, it shows that they're promising for a, a moon that could last long enough for life to form. So everything's fine when it comes to this planet, apart from this moon. It probably doesn't exist, obviously. It's a fictional moon. So, yeah, that, that I mean, it, it's a gas giant, obviously, and then, um, as you can see, it's cloudy. Now, the next one, we don't know much about this one, but it's the same size, yeah, it's the same size as Uranus. Let's go to it. It's about the same size as Uranus, so I made it blue, so it looks a bit like Uranus. Um, it was discovered in 2010, and obviously like the others, it's migrated forward over time. And it might have moons that might one day be habitable, but we don't know. Anyway, that was the first episode of Exoplanetary Guides with me, Ross McCormack. So, I'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like, share it, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Where's the buttons?